Hey guys, it's the History Nerd, and we're back with another exciting episode of Hearts of Iron 4. Right off the bat, you guys ever have those days when things just don't go your way? I mean, you might be looking at the game time and say, 6th of June, 1940. I don't think we were that close in the last episode, and indeed. Indeed, gentle viewer, you would be correct. I've just played about 40 minutes of this game uh, without fraps running. Therefore, I haven't recorded a goddamn thing. Uh, regardless, in North Africa, the Canadian Army, or the Canadian Corps, whatever you want to call it, has been incredibly successful. Uh, aside from a few minor issues of General Anderson deciding to continually swap places of one or two infantry divisions so that we don't ever actually get to a point when we can launch an invasion, we have successfully pushed through Tripoli and uh, the airfield that's by Tripoli and then some other places where we've pushed on near to Benghazi. So, as you can imagine, uh, that's exactly where we're going to go. It was where I was going to leave us off in the episode nobody will see. But instead, let's push it on home now. And uh, what else is going on? Well, obviously World War II has started, and I do desperately apologize for actually not covering that. I feel horrible about it. Uh, long story short, France has fallen. Belgium and the Netherlands are not too far behind. The Soviet Union has begun fighting Finland, and well, we can't really see what's going on, thanks to Germany pushing into Denmark, uh, both Denmark and Norway have joined the Allies, so we've got a little bit of a view of what's going on against the Soviets, and it's probably not going to go well for Finland, let's be honest. Uh, in other news, the Germans and the Japanese are talking. There's no official Japanese-German alliance yet, but taking a look at the map, uh, the last thing we need is for the Japanese, with their huge successes in China now, to uh, join up with the Axis. Uh, what else is going on? We're hitting some supply problems uh, in North Africa. I'm hoping securing more ports will alleviate that. If we look at it, our transports for trade and supply, we've got 11 out of 8. Now, I don't know what's limiting us to 8. Uh, when I checked earlier, it was 25 out of 22, so I don't know what's factoring into that. But I'm hoping the more ports we get, over here, the more open up things will, will happen with supplies. That is a horrible sentence, and I apologize for your ears and brain having to process that. Regardless, let's get this show on the road, shall we? So, we're going to push into Benghazi here. I hope. And, um, yeah, so like I said back when nobody could hear me, one of the things that I'm like, I'm split on this game. Uh, I like the fact that you don't necessarily have to micromanage your armies by just giving your armies general directions to go for, and the the AI will take care of it. Having to manually move 24 units would be a pain in the ass. I couldn't imagine doing it with larger armies like the United States or Germany. However, the AI of the generals does seem a little touchy at times. Japan demands French Indochina. Taking advantage of French weakness in the light of the struggle in Europe, Japan has coerced the new government into surrendering control over their colony in Indochina. Japanese forces have already moved to occupy all major bases in the region, and experts fear that the colony could be used as a launching point for further military expeditions. Vultures pigging on a corpse. And it's very true. Um, very true and very concerning because we don't want the Japanese to get any stronger than they already are. Uh, we are, you know, teaching Italy a lesson out here, although Italy is also teaching uh, Britain a bit of a lesson. They've kind of split the British African possessions in twain. There's one little region here that's still connecting the two. Otherwise, um, Egypt would be cut off from the rest of the empire, although, of course, they're still connected via ports, so... If you've got a port, you're never really cut off from Great Britain. Battle plans with no units assigned. What do you mean we don't have units assigned to the battle plan? How could that even happen? Because we got all of the... Oh, whatever. It's too hot for me to try and figure it out. So what else is going on? Um, for production-wise, a lot of the comments were saying, Hey, you gotta build support equipment. I'm... 
started a production line for support equipment, but when I put it in, it said fulfilled. I'm pretty sure that at the start, for the first few episodes, we were producing um, supplies. So, yes, I mean, I, I need to be producing more. Um, but I think we were okay. Still, though, thank you for, for pointing that out. I do appreciate anything that I'm missing. Looks like the Soviet Union white piece Finland. So, uh, I take it back. I don't know what Finland was doing, but they did it right. So good on them. We've got a little bit of a French holdout over here, although most of this, well, especially these lands over here, were taken by the UK in a naval invasion, and then it looks like the French have retaken them. Hungary and Romania declared war on each other. Well, that's going to get interesting. Hungary joined the Axis, so I would imagine Romania will be joining us uh, sooner than later. Yep, German Reich is called Hungary into the war, so we might as well bring Romania on our side, because the more allies we got, the better off things go. There we go, that's what I thought. Uh, we are, thankfully, handedly beating back the Italians in North Africa, though. So, well, Europe may not be successful at all. Um, the fight in North Africa is turning in our favor, which is good, and thankfully all of this land is going to the French, so we don't necessarily need to worry about getting the um, Royal Canadian Mounted Police that I had designed, the cavalry with a military police unit in it. We don't really need to worry about getting those guys into the field yet, which is good. We don't really want those guys in the field, because um, it's kind of a waste of manpower and production. Well, I say waste. It isn't, because obviously being able to effectively hold lines and, well, not hold lines, but hold occupied territory is going to be useful. This is what I mean by what the fuck are you doing, AI? This is the front line, right? And so right now I have four units of tanks, really trucks with a tank attached to it, and four units of infantry in... Uh, infrastructure move mode to go to the middle of the fucking desert. And I don't know why. I don't know what is causing. I mean, maybe it's this front line here, in which case, you know what? Don't even worry about that. We don't need that front line there. And that could be it. That very well could be the problems I was facing. So now let's get these guys added in over here. Oh God, that's not what I wanted to do. I just want one. So is it a control click? Obviously not, because now I've still got two front lines. So it's got to be this one, then, that I can control click those units to. Are you guys going to turn around now? Okay. So in that case, yes, it was my fault for not getting rid of this front line that was developed from way back when we did our initial push into the Italian-held lands of North Africa. I stand corrected. I understand completely what those guys were doing. Uh, still, if we take a look at our forces here, right, you're going to see them just moving back and forth. And I don't know what that accomplishes. But it does accomplish something, I guess. Regardless, we should probably give our army some new orders, so let's see if we can't secure that airfield and then get Tobruk under our command as well. So, General Anderson, if you can go ahead and plan that out and then let me know when you're ready to advance. That would be lovely. In France, if you would really like to just take this one unit, just this one unit, and put it here and then here, that would be incredible. I don't think they will, though. So, uh, with the success in North Italy, North Italy, I keep saying that, with the success in Italian North Africa, uh, almost completed, uh, and finally some solid pushback against Ethiopia... Uh, we can start looking to going to Italy. And as we can see, the Brits, they're fans of naval invasions. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure that's not a bad thing. I'm sure it's quite lovely. Uh, did we wind up getting those planes added to London? No. There we go. We'll toss in another 24. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's not what I wanted to do at all. There, but just pull one back. We'll toss in 24 more uh, strategic bombers. We'll get them added in, which will be nice. It doesn't look like we've lost any bombers yet, although they could be 
getting replaced as time goes on. In fact, if one gets shot down, I would hope they get replaced by what we're producing. But we can see there's quite a few German bombers coming up over into uh, the channel here. Hopefully the RAF, which should be all of those fancy little Spitfires. Hopefully they can do something. Although it certainly looks like the Germans are bombing the crap out of England, which is a bit of a concern. Um, one of the comments did say that the only way to go about um, doing air combat missions is to have fighter planes. Yes, I 100% agree with that. Uh, as I've said, though, as the Canadians, we don't really have the research or the manufacturing to put into production of a large air force. And considering our position, I think it makes far more sense to put production into bombers than it does into fighters. So that's why I've ignored completely um, the fighter bit of the Air Force, because we're counting on Britain to have that. And Britain should have a pretty good fighter Air Force. Um, to the point where, you know, I mean, especially over in, like, England, let's say, sorry, Britain, um, we shouldn't need fighters. And over here, there should still be enough fighters to keep ourselves covered. And it sort of seems like there are. Anyway, let's go ahead and launch this attack, and while I'm thinking about airplanes, let's rebase our close air support to Benghazi, which will be able to accommodate those guys. And they can continue with their close air support mission. And if we look, that should be 29 of our planes coming along and throwing some damage down. This is why I'm, I'm saying I'm a fan of the close air support. Because they will help your, your armies in their pushes. So that's why I've gone for them. Um, because, you know, not only from an RP perspective, but just from a this-makes-sense perspective. I don't, think it, I don't think Canada should be dumping a lot of production uh, into fighters when the big boys are going to have them, you know? Like, we don't, we don't need to worry about that. So, we've got ourselves Benghazi and Tobruk, which is pretty darn good. I think we're pretty much ready to link up with the Brits. So let's finish this off, like so. We still have 24, 23 divisions. Where's my holdout? You? There we go. Get up to the front. And then he'll tell me when they're ready to push, and we can push and finally drive the Italians off the coast of North Africa. And it's just a little bit of cleanup through here. But that's pretty darn good. Uh, what else did I want to cover? Right. Uh, well, let's read about the capture of or the capitulation of Slovakia. Armand Kalinesko has announced that the cowardly Slovakian nation could no longer withstand the pressure from the overwhelming presence of Romanian forces throughout the country. The Slovakian government chose to flee the country and has gone into exile. Their main forces have capitulated, and Romania is now in control of their home area. So, what happened here? Um, I don't know if this happened in this video, so we'll give it nice and briefly. Hungary attacked Romania. Hungary then joined the Axis. Romania joined the Allies, and because Hungary was a part of the Axis, everybody declared war on Romania, including Slovakia, who looks like they've now been beaten back by the Romanians. In fact, it looks like Hungary's kind of been beaten back by the Romanians. Good job, Romania. Uh, with the aviation effort done, we will go with our bomber focus, because I do think that makes more sense. Uh, we're still holding out in Belgium and the Netherlands. Not well, but we are still holding out. Japan is justifying against us? I think by us, you mean like the royal us, as in like the allies. Not necessarily Japan is formulating... Uh, Kazai Bele against Canada because they are not getting Vancouver Island from me. No, sir. Does it actually show me what they're doing? Do I actually have to go find them? Non-aggression pact. 
expeditionary forces fighting that. So I can't even see what they're doing. But they are looking to start a war with the Allies. So why don't you just bomb Pearl Harbor? That'll bring the Americans in. Are we ready to go? We're ready to go. Let's push. Yeah, take that, Italy. You're in for a surprise. Come on, close air support. Let's get in the fight. And there they are. 29 of them have made it over. It is a bit of a distance, so... I guess there might be a better spot for them. But we will keep them where they are. Yeah, low supplies. That's, that's to be expected when you're fighting in a gigantic effing desert. Support weapons four. So yes, I did jump ahead a little bit because we had a 50% modifier to that, basically a research coupon. So now our infantry support weapons are effing two years ahead of everyone else. We, the Canadians, the best machine gun in World War II right now. Suck on that, Germany. Uh, in the meantime, we've got our special forces we can research and I'm torn between Marines and paratroopers. So, Marines aren't going to require much in the way of new existing infrastructure to be built up. America, you've got quite a large army on the border. Hope you're not pl planning for uh, Operation War Plan Red. Um, so the Marines, yeah, like I say, we wouldn't have to invest too much in the infrastructure. Obviously, with paratroopers, we'd have to invest in paratrooping planes. So maybe it is best to just go with the Marines and uh, see what we can do with them. So let's do that. And get that push finished. Uh, what else was there? Right, channel. So um, with the release of Hearts of Iron 4, um, I'm going to tone down the videos mainly because uh, I only have so much time in the day. This is a hobby channel of mine. And so, you know, I got like a full-time job to do with this. It's summer in Canada. So I want to try and reverse my monitor tan and just, you know, just, I, I, I can't really throw all of my spare time into this channel. So tomorrow, don't be expecting a Hearts of Iron 4 video. I know that sucks, um, but there will be probably, I'm most likely leaning towards Crusader Kings 2. Then the next day it'll be Stellaris. And then the day after that, we'll be back into Hearts of Iron 4. So I just want to try and get a good schedule on my channel to accommodate all of the series I've got running. And yes, I realize I'm a big idiot for having three separate Paradox games to play, so sue me. Trotsky survives assassination attempt. Oh, really? After a violent struggle in his Mexico City home earlier today, Leon Trotsky killed a would-be assassin with the ice axe the man tried to attack him with. The killer has been identified as a Spanish national believed to have been employed by the NKVD. Trotsky was once the top lieutenant and heir presumptive of Vladimir Lenin, but after a failed power struggle, he was forced into exile from the Soviet Union by Joseph Stalin. Speaking to the press, Trotsky denounced the attempt on his life as yet another cowardly plot hatched by Stalin to silence his critics. It's interesting. I, I can't imagine anybody wouldn't denounce an attempt on their life. Still, it would have been interesting... Well, I mean, that is interesting that Trotsky isn't dead. I wonder if the Soviet Union's civil war might still happen. All right. We've got... That land returned to Britain. And the Netherlands have capitulated. Dirk Jan de Geer has announced that the Dutch nation can no longer withstand the pressures from the occupying German forces, committing travesties throughout the country. The Dutch government has gone into exile, and I've read that, I just realized as I clicked away, that none of you guys heard that, so I apologize. That was in the mystery series, no one will see. Alright, well, oh, look at that! We've got some... German units there? They look Italian from, from where I'm looking. Uh, okay, so there's everybody. So now it's just basically clean up until we can get down. By the time we get down to Ethiopia, I'm sure things will be cleared out. So we might as well just order everybody down here, although that is kind of a waste, isn't it? Um, maybe we'll just take you. Yeah, let's cancel everyone's movement. That is so handy. And we will take you because you could use 
the experience as could you, and those two guys shouldn't be much in the way of a problem, considering they're surrounded and cut off and shouldn't be supplied by anyone. So we can hopefully get these guys up to uh, regular status with this push. And then, assuming the Brits and the South Africans and the Americans and the Indians and all of those people can take care of Ethiopia, and I think that assumption is going to be generally correct. France, would you clean up the back? You have horses not doing anything. Send them there. Send them there. Problem solved. You get your colonies back. Sorry, I'm a little touchy. But fine. France won't do it. Canada knows its role. Just you. There, there, there. Go. Make France happy. Come on. Realize the driving conditions aren't that great, but you guys can make it. Ha-ha! Quick and easy fight. A little too quick and easy. Those guys didn't earn any experience. Oh, are you going to move now? So do I not have to move my tank in there then? Or if I stop moving my tank, will you stop moving your horses? Let's find out. Stop. Alright, I hope you continue to clear that out then. You two guys not having a problem? improved anti-air which is something I'm toying with adding to my units. I'm not sure if uh, anti-air or anti-tank would be the better way to go. We do have if we take a look at my tank units we do have a tank destroyer researched for the medium tank so we're looking pretty good there and I guess what we could probably do actually is move on to the medium tank too. 75 days but then I don't necessarily want to start production. Oh, well, I guess we've already got medium tanks in the field. Max speed of 9 kilometers an hour? That can't be right. What are you, 10? 10? That can't be right. Those tanks should be faster than 10 kilometers an hour. Anyway. Uh... I mean, I guess we might as well research this because we know we're going to use it with that kind of cheap discount why not come on there we go uh, let's get the Canadian Corps all official like up to Alexandria because wherever we go next uh, that's going to be the port we leave from obviously because it's the closest FN1 uh, what do we want? Should we get some... I guess... Lloyd Samuel Bredner here for this decisive battle. Just because we're not doing any co convoy raiding. We're just protecting. So I don't know if that even factors into it. If we take a look at our convoy escorts. They're doing some decent work. Uh, let's go over to the Navy tab and see if we can find out. It doesn't seem to be a way to tell, like, if they're, you know, keeping convoys alive. Friendly ships present, 21. Naval supremacy, 100%. That sounds groovy to me. We got everybody moving in over here. Right, let's see if we can get our fighting strength up. And in fact, you know what we will do is instead of... Well, no, we'll go like that. There we go. Instead of just piling everybody there, we'll get everybody to garrison the groups here. Spread out. Make sure that attrition isn't going to be killing us. Although, why we're putting two tanks in the same square? I don't know. And then one's moving away. This is... This is what I mean. I like the fact that I don't have to micromanage my army, but if I sit here and watch what my army does, it's just a little bit frustrating. I don't understand 
why they're always on the move. It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, in the meantime, we could probably move our close air support back over to Malta. And we'll cancel that order. So they can just fly there. And then once they get there, like I say, I think the best route for a naval invasion of Italy is going to be going into Sicily first. Um, I guess we could also push into Sardinia. Although it looks like the Americans, uh, under the British flag, because that is who they... Oh no, under the French, so why is it red? Regardless, the Americans have taken, it looks like, Italian land in French name, but given it British colors. So, who knows what's going on there. Uh, thankfully, Italy is split in twain by our allies, which is a surprising development. Um, but I'm certainly thinking that that's going to be the way in to Europe, although what we could also do here is land the Canadian forces in Romania and see if we can assist in the push against Hungary and Slovakia to bring some of the Axis' allies out of the war, which is a very awkward sentence to say. Uh, let's take and get some strategic bomber development going on as well, because we might as well research those guys up, and then we will take our current strategic bomber, which apparently needs 12, which concerns me. I have a feeling our forces have been taking losses then. Let's take a look. Uh, merge them together? Yeah, you guys shouldn't be taking losses now, right? Because that's where you're operating? Are you not operating anywhere? Night bombing? Night bombing. There we go. That should be our bombers up in the air sometime soon. Whenever you guys will want to get flying. Unless those are already them. I think those might be them because they are not showing any sort of ownership. Alright, well... Maybe our bombers are flying, maybe they're not. It looks like they're flying now. So, um, you know what? With our forces happily relaxing in North Africa. Let's... Oh no, that's... That's the British Raj. That is not Canadian forces. It's that little icon compared to that little icon. I get confused between the two. Uh, so let's leave it up to you guys. Do we go Sicily or do we go into Romania and assist in the east? I don't know. That's for my comment section council to decide. Uh, like I say, I think the push into Sicily might be a little more difficult, but we've got the close air support there. Uh, helping out the Romanians wouldn't be a bad idea, though, uh, because they've got a good way into uh, what should potentially be a relatively weakened Germany. At least, not well, not weakened, but like squishy. Like, we're poking into the underbelly as opposed to pushing against um, the defenses that they might have. Thankfully, they won't have time to build up an Atlantic Wall yet, so that's good. I don't know why Vichy France isn't a thing yet, but I imagine that'll come with time. Uh, so yeah, Sicily or Romania, where are we going, guys? Let me know. On that note, because I've been recording for like an hour now, quote-unquote recording, I do apologize for missing that video. Um, so yeah, as you can see, North Africa was a, was a success. Please finish up taking your, your colonies back, France, please. That's all I ask of you. We got Ethiopia covered. Romania or Sicily? Let me know in the comments. Uh, thumbs up if you have enjoyed today's video. Leave your comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, jokes, musings, what have you below. Thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.